Do you know how to figure out if the TXV is the problem? The TXV is not always the problem, but when it is, how do you figure out the TXV is what's causing your issues? If you want a couple more videos on TXVs, I've got them down in the link in the description. Go check those out after this video is over. Today we're talking about the thermostatic expansion valve. On a split air conditioning system, a package air conditioning system, there is one TXV. On a heat pump, there are two TXVs. There is one indoor and there is one outdoor. And in a heat pump, in the cooling operation, the indoor TXV is used. And during the heating operation, the outdoor TXV is used. So how do we know the TXV is the problem, right? So first, we have to know how to use a ductulator. If you know how to use a ductulator, then you know how to figure out if the duct work that is attached to the system that you're troubleshooting is the right size. Because if it's not the right size, that's going to cause some issues with your pressures, especially if the duct size is too small for the unit. Airflow is one of the biggest problems in the field. If you know how to size duct work, you know how to use a ductulator, then you're going to be able to rule that out as, hey, the duct size is great. We shouldn't have any problems there. Now, do you know how to use an anometer? Do you know how to check airflow? Do you know how many of these vents a unit needs depending on the size of the equipment, what ton it is? Well, you need to be able to know that. I've got a video on duct sizing. You need to check that out. Link in the description for that video. But if you know how to size duct work, then you can rule that out. If you know how to figure out how many vents there are, you can rule that out because airflow is the biggest issue. Now you've checked the filter. You made sure the filter's good. You made sure the duct works the right size. You got plenty of airflow. You've already checked with your anometer for the feet per minute on the return reel and the supply. You know exactly what that's supposed to be. If you don't, check out my video down in the description, how to size duct work. Airflow. I've got an airflow and duct design guide I can send you. So we've ruled all that out. We know our blower speed's right. We know we got plenty of airflow. And now we've checked our refrigerant levels. Okay, our refrigerant levels, we've got a good superheat. We've got good subcooling. Okay, do we know what that is? Do we know if we need design subcooling of 10 degrees? Or do we need superheat of 10 degrees or 15? If you know how to do superheat and subcooling, then you can rule that out. Okay, what about your filter dryer? Is your filter dryer stopped up? Do you know how to check a difference between the filter dryer temperature on both sides of the filter dryer to see if there's a restriction? It's not always the TXV. Let's talk about the TXV. TXV's got a bulb right here, right? And that bulb stays on the uh, vapor line. And that vapor line is basically the outlet of the evaporator because the inlet is the liquid line, okay? So it comes into the TXV and then it turns into a low pressure liquid and it basically uh, boils off. And this right here, when you take this bulb and you take it off the vapor line and you hold it, okay, then what that should do is that should open up this valve, allowing more liquid in. If you attach this back to the line where it should be nice and cold, then it's going to close the valve a little more. So. You might need to take this bulb off, hold it with your hand, see if the valve is opening and closing. And you could have pressures that are, you see, you see you're adding refrigerant and your pressure is 50. And no matter what you do, your pressure on your suction side doesn't go up. It just stays where it's at and the head pressure is going up. That's a sign. Could be your TXV, but you have to rule out all those other things. What about your refrigerant pipe sizing? What about the sweat fittings? that you connect your refrigerant pipe to for your outdoor and your indoor unit. What if it's a five ton unit, it's only got a, a three quarter inch vapor line and a quarter inch liquid line? Well, that liquid line's way too small. You know that, that vapor line's way too small for that five ton unit. That five ton unit probably needs seven eighths vapor line and inch and eighth vapor line. This is a lot of info and if you're a beginner, I hope that you understand this or it gives you some type of understanding like, hey, there's a lot of stuff I need to learn because it might not just be the TXV. Now, there are some sure signs, and I want you to check out the videos down below. I've got one example where I was trying to add refrigerant and my suction pressure was not doing anything. My head pressure would go up, so I changed the TXV, and after I changed it, then my pressures are totally different. I know for sure it was the TXV, but it's not always the TXV, and you got to make sure that you know what you're doing. That way, you're not spending a long time on service calls just running in circles you got to have a process of elimination you definitely have to have a process so 
Check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. Go check out the videos in the link in the description, especially the ductwork video. If you have any questions about TXVs, let me know. TXV is a metering device you'll see on most 14 sear or higher uh, units. I think 13 sear and lower, you were at, you were orificed mostly, but there's some units that are still, well, now mostly 13 sear units use orifices, 14 sear units use TXV. And that's to gain the efficiency and make it that sear. So, hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something. Hope you're ready to go learn more. Really appreciate you watching. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. And I'm Tad reminding you, it's not always the TXV.